Number 10. Before the incident. The ARA San Juan was a TR-1700 class submarine, equipped with a diesel electric engine. It was in service from 1986 until the unfortunate explosion that ended the lives of 44 servicemen. ARA stands for Argentinian Navy in Spanish, and its namesake is one of the country's provinces. All other Argentine submarines also have names starting with the letter S. This kind of underwater craft operates using its diesel reserves, which power up the electricity generator that charges up its massive batteries. The ARA San Juan underwent a midlife update that started in 2008. Due to funding shortages, the repairs took five years to complete. Doubt would later be cast on whether repairs had been properly conducted or not. Number 9. 44 Crew Members After completing a war game in early November of 2017, the ARA San Juan prepared to return to its home base at Mar del Plata in the province of Buenos Aires. 44 crew members were on board. This included Argentina's first female submarine officer and the only woman on the submarine. One of the soldiers was due to get married in December yet agreed to go on the mission because the arrival was set for two weeks before the ceremony. The wife of another serviceman was four months pregnant with their second child. The ARA's lieutenant commander was the son of one of the submarine's previous commanders and several other crew members belonged to families with strong connections to the Navy. Number 8. Last Communication On November the 15th, the Chief of Operations, Fernando Villarreal, established the last telephone communication with home base. He informed of a fire which had started in one of the battery tanks. Villarreal reported the situation had been resolved and the crew believed that the incident had been caused by seawater seeping in through the submarine snorkel. The short-circuited system was isolated to avoid any further incidents. During the call, Villarreal also notified the army that they'd let the motors rest. Submerging merely 130 feet spared the engines from being overworked. The crew planned to evaluate the submarine's condition after the batteries cooled down. From that moment on, 10 more automatic alerts reporting damage to the submarine were sent to the base, but no further human contact was established. Number 7. Disappearance Roughly halfway through its journey, and after going underwater as informed, all communications stopped. Since it was protocol that the crew needed to report twice a day, the disappearance was discovered within 24 hours. At this point, the submarine would have had enough air to allow the crew to survive without resurfacing for 10 days. The search and rescue protocol unfolded around the clock as time was of the essence. The problem was that the Navy was dealing with a search area of over 186,297 square miles. That's more than half the size of the entire state of Texas. The search was further complicated by particularly bad weather, which led to high winds and massive waves. The rescue efforts had to be postponed several times. The Navy informed the public and media outlets daily. The mystery about what had happened to the submarine grew each day it remained missing. It had vanished and several conspiracy theories emerged in the aftermath. Number 6. International Outreach Almost immediately after the disappearance was reported, several countries offered their immediate aid. Unless the submarine was found within two weeks, survival was highly unlikely. The US, the UK, Russia, Brazil, Chile, Norway, Germany, Canada, France, Peru, Colombia and Uruguay joined the mission, adding both technological and human resources as well as vessels and aircrafts. The search extended for two weeks with no country wanting to withdraw support without the Argentinian government declaring that survival was no longer a possibility. Number 5. From Rescue to Recovery Mission On November the 30th of 2017, the Navy declared that 44 crewmen had died in the line of duty. This began a year-long recovery mission. At the same time, a criminal investigation was launched, trying to discover if there had been any form of negligence that contributed to the tragedy. Number 4. Acoustic Anomaly Eight days after the ARA San Juan's disappearance, reports of an anomalous singular violent and non-nuclear event surfaced, being consistent with an explosion. It was spotted 30 miles north of its last known location. By then, the situation was considered critical. Though it took some time for the government to become aware of this acoustic anomaly, it's believed to have occurred 10 hours 
after the submarine's last communication. The Navy rejected this theory, but questions were raised regarding the possibility of a missile or a mine having caused the explosion. Number 3. Conspiracy Theories Several conspiracy theories began appearing soon after the submarine was reported missing. People were skeptical about the official explanations, believing a cover-up was in play. One of the initial theories was that the ARA San Juan had hit a naval mine left behind by the UK during the Falklands War. This was unlikely, as the UK reportedly hadn't used this kind of weaponry during the conflict. There were several news reports claiming that the supposed war games the ARA San Juan had participated in had been fake. It was rumored that it was actually an espionage mission of British ships and planes. The Argentinian Navy was quick to deny these allegations, but not everyone believed this version. Family members received strange messages, supposedly sent by the ARA San Juan's crew members. These texts spoke about British helicopters and a Chilean ship chasing the submarine before it went underwater. A group of Argentinian politicians took offense to the UK participating in the rescue mission, referring to them as pirates and accusing them of being responsible for war crimes. It was rumored that Russia had embarked on a disinformation campaign encouraging these accusations since the Falkland Islands are a strategic location towards the exploitation of Antarctica for energy resources. It was theorized that a potential conflict could be beneficial to the Russian government. Today's topic was requested by Mark Watterson. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. One Year Anniversary and Discovery Two days after the first anniversary of the submarine's disappearance, the vessel's remains were located, 12 miles away from the spot where the sound anomaly had been heard. It was buried 2,976 feet underwater, which is the equivalent of a 297-story building. Though the exact location of the wreck is known, it's considered incredibly hard to retrieve. The cost of the operation alone would be astronomical, and the mission would be dangerous for all involved. The ARA San Juan laid on the sea's twilight zone, where almost no natural light exists. The pressure at this depth reaches 90 bar. To put things into perspective, the human body without a reinforced atmospheric suit can withstand up to 4 bar. The most recent submarine recovery was performed by Russia in 2001. With the 18,000-ton Kursk vessel, it cost $80 million and was nine times closer to the surface at 337 feet underwater. The cost of recovering the ARA San Juan would be several times higher. Before we move on, official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. It's out of this world. Number 1. Investigation Thousands of photographs were taken to begin an investigation of the accident. The close-up pictures show the submarine had been crushed inwards due to the pressure. Parts had scattered 230 feet away from the wreck. Without recovering the submarine's remains, it's impossible to know the exact reasons behind the explosion. However, investigators believe it might have been caused by a concentration of hydrogen. This would be a direct consequence of the fire reported hours before the ARA San Juan's disappearance. The ARA San Juan possessed 500 tons of lead-acid batteries, which release hydrogen when overcharged. This gas easily leads to a powerful explosion when in contact with oxygen. Many of the crew members' families were outraged by this verdict, with one of them being quoted as saying, if they sent him off, I want them to bring him back to me. The government was accused of hiding information about the submarine's true condition before leaving port. These detractors claimed that the ARA San Juan was lacking safety racks as well as radio beacons. It's worth mentioning that without actually recovering the ship's remains, these accusations cannot be verified. In the end, it was determined that the 44 crew members did not suffer. The blast was so powerful and sudden that it would have killed them instantly. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on one of the links on your screen for more videos.